There are a few items I need. To start with, I'd like some cable ties. He murmurs, his expression both cool and amused. Cable ties? We stock various links. Shall I show you? I mutter, my voice soft and wavering. Get a grip, Steel. A slight frown mars Gray's rather lovely brow. Please, lead the way, Miss Steel, he says. I try for nonchalance as I come out from behind the counter. But really, I'm concentrating hard on not falling over my own feet. My legs are suddenly the consistency of jello. I'm so glad I decided to wear my best jeans this morning. They're with the electrical goods. I'll eat. My voice is a little too bright. I glance up at him and regret it almost immediately. Damn, he's handsome. After you, he murmurs, gesturing with his long-fingered, beautifully manicured hand. With my heart almost strangling me, because it's in my throat trying to escape from my mouth, I head down one of the aisles to the electrical section. Why is he in Portland? Why is he here at Clayton's? And from a very tiny, underused part of my brain, probably located at the base of my medulla oblongata, near where my subconscious dwells, comes the thought, he's here to see you. No way. I dismiss it immediately. Why would this beautiful, powerful, urbane man want to see me? The idea is preposterous, and I kick it out of my head. Are you in Portland on business? I ask, and my voice is too high, like I've got my finger trapped in a door or something. Damn, try to be cool, Anna. I was visiting the WSU Farming Division. It's based in Vancouver. I'm currently funding some research there in crop rotation and soil science, he says matter-of-factly. See, not here to find you at all, my subconscious sneers at me, loud, proud, and pouty. I flush at my foolish, wayward thoughts. All part of your feed the world plan? I tease. Something like that, he acknowledges, and his lips quirk up in a half smile. He gazes at the selection of cable ties we stock at Clayton's. What on earth is he going to do with those? I cannot picture him as a do-it-yourselfer at all. His fingers trail across the various packages displayed, and for some inexplicable reason, I have to look away. He bends and selects a packet. These will do, he says with his oh-so-secret smile. Is there anything else? I'd like some masking tape. Masking? Are you redecorating? The words are out before I can stop them. Surely he hires laborers or has staff to help him decorate. No, not redecorating, he says quickly, then smirks. And I have the uncanny feeling that he's laughing at me. Am I that funny? Funny looking? This way, I murmur, embarrassed. Masking tape is in the decorating aisle. I glance behind me as he follows. Have you worked here long? His voice is low, and he's gazing at me, concentrating hard. I blush brightly. Why the hell does he have this effect on me? I feel like I'm 14 years old, gauche as always, and out of place. Eyes front, steel. Four years, I mutter as we reach our goal. To distract myself, I reach down and select the two widths of masking tape that we stop. I'll take that one, Grace says softly, pointing to the wider tape, which I pass to him. Our fingers brush very briefly, and the current is there again, zapping through me like I've touched an exposed wire. I gasp involuntarily as I feel it all the way down to somewhere dark and unexplored, deep in my belly. Desperately, I scrabble around for my equilibrium. Anything else? My voice is husky and breathy. His eyes widen slightly. 
some rope, I think. His voice mirrors mine, husky. This way. I duck my head down to hide my recurring blush and move toward the aisle. What sort were you after? We have synthetic and natural filament rope, twine, cable cord. I halt at his expression, his eyes darkening. Holy cow. I'll take five yards of the natural filament rope, please. Quickly, with trembling fingers, I measure out five yards against the fixed ruler, aware that his hot gray gaze is on me. I dare not look at him. Jeez, could I feel any more self-conscious? 